one's going to talk about the great Joe Beaver. Oh, yeah. You know who he is? Joe Beaver. Do I know who Joe Beaver is? Yeah. Yes, I do. Eight-time world champion. Oh, man, are you kidding? Hall of Fame rodeo man. You started at age 20. I remember you from uh, Victoria, Texas. Yeah. I followed that career, man. Lives in Huntsville, Texas now. Yes. Joe His wife, Jenna. Oh, yeah. well, yes, he's a barrel racer. Yeah, this guy, uh, career earnings, almost uh, $3 million. Eight-time world champion. Eight-time. That's right. Tie-down champion. Oh. All-around cowboy three times. Mm -hmm. 2006 all around. I mean, this guy, he was 41 years old then. Uh, Joe Beaver, I talked to him yesterday. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, I'll keep this brief. About five years ago, he was on the show when he was a world champion. And it was during the national finals in Las Vegas, where you finals. And he's in a tie down roping. That's where they come out of the street, rope the cap, jump off, run out there and tie the calf to his legs. He said, and I just met him, I didn't know the guy. He said, I, uh, Next buckle I went, I'm going to send to your son and wife. Mm -hmm. And I sit down, he loved the studio, I said, the channel, I said, oh, man. What, what the chances of that are, what well, is, about What do you think of the chances of that happening? Yeah. Well, about three nights later, he won the fifth with go around there in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Two nights later, a FedEx package showed up. And that buckle is on wife's dresser right now. It should have been FedEx, absolutely. And I thought, man, a guy like that, if a guy would keep his word like that, yeah. So if White ever decides he wants to, so we're going to go down and march to Huntsville, Texas, and White's going to rope with Joe Beaver. Now, wow. Uh, for a week. Yeah. I didn't know whether I should tell you this or not. I was uh, thinking about it. <clears throat> but um, uh, kids grow up on ranches, have different experiences than kids who grow up in cities. And, um, so during the holidays, we were at the ranch. It was one of the, it's not a pleasant experience because it's 10 degrees, the wind blows literally 60 miles an hour. But um, the day after Christmas was Sunday, and uh, everybody was off except uh, Candy and some others. So, but Wyatt, when he's there, he's, I don't know why he does this, but he does it all summer. And gets up at 4.35 o'clock in the morning. He goes up with the cowboys and ranch house. He feeds all the animals and stuff. So the day, so we had bought him a roping horse, another roping horse, by a son of a Buster Gray horse. Had the potential to be a good one. So he gets up at 5 o'clock Sunday morning, there's nobody there, and he goes up to the uh, barn, and he finds his horse dead uh, in the stall. And it's freezing, 10 degrees. The horse had apparently caught it was out in a little run and was on his back with his foot still out of his quarter. So he came running back down to the house, which was about a quarter of a mile from the barn, in the house screaming that his horse was dead. And, uh, and his mother woke his mother right up. And uh, there is a tough kid, he's not a so I, I couldn't understand. I thought, you know, just waking up. I thought it was one of his dogs. You know? And so um, then Wes came in, and, uh, we, and we got to back over. We dug a 10-foot hole, Wes did. And Wyatt wrote a little note <laughs> and uh, threw it in. I don't know what the verse said. <laughs> threw it in with a horse on. And so sometimes, you know, we get criticized about this ranch and have over the years, but and, but Dave and I have discussed, and perhaps you and Tom and I have, that over all these past 10, 12 years, he, he makes friends with all these kids who come from the ranch. You know, he's been over a thousand kids at the ranch. And, uh, and some of them don't make it. So he's had that experience. Yeah. And then you it's, it's, and then you get uh, and kids on ranches know this, you, then you lose these animals. Although I was talking to not just kids on ranches, I was talking to little kids. <laughs> they had a great dog. We had a dog on there. But the dog, something happened to the dog, they took it to the vet, and they operated on the dog. And this is when the kids split because kids were all much younger. And uh, so the, the dog was in recovery, and they took it to the vet overnight, and they got to bring the dog home. Well, the dog died.
So the next day, the kids, they're in school. So they're all coming home, getting off the bus at different times. And the teacher had to tell each kid that the dogs came out. Well, you know, so it's like, I was just kidding. I, I wasn't, didn't mean to bother any kids on that. So, but anyway, I watch. I don't know everybody thinks the kid's a good kid. He's a great kid. You know, he's, he's a little wise ass, but he's a great kid. So, um, and he wants to be a world champion, and he probably will be. So it's going to start with Joe Beavers. That's why I mentioned that. Anyway, time for a little. I didn't mean to. That was to tell you that story. No. Because so many of you contributed so much money to the ranch, and it's um, the only worst idea I had in the ranch was the all the money spread. <laughs> no, no, it's no. No, the ranch is a great idea, but it's uh, yeah. you just well, you just you just don't know what toll it takes on your heart. You know. Good thing I don't have one. Here's Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quickly, I man. Some headlines. The Republican-controlled House uh, takes up its first spending cut measure today, a proposed 5% cut in their...